Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Physics Tricks. So let's start with uh, Laws of Motion DPP4 and in this I'll give you some tricks also. So do watch this video till the end and you will find some fine, some very good uh, trick in this video. So see here we have the first question. Three equal weights E, B, C of mass 2 kg each are hanging on a string passing over a fixed frictionless pulley as shown in the figure. The tension in the string connecting weights B and C is okay. So in between we want B and C whatever the tension is there that tension we want. Okay. Now how to find this type of uh, like uh, tensions right in the strings. So firstly always remember find out the tension. How to find the tension? See. For to find the tension, I'll, I'll just tell one trick, right? So it's not a trick actually; it is known fact. So we have supposed to be this is the object of mass m, and if I apply the force of 10 newton from this direction, 2 newton from this direction, then we can say that acceleration will be always be in the greater force direction. So the acceleration we can have is 10 minus 2, that is greater force minus smaller force divided by total mass of the system m. Right now, so likewise same formula we can apply over here. Now see, this is B and C two masses are there. B and C two masses, so can we say this is 40 Newton in the downward direction and over here only A that is 20 Newton in the downward direction. So over here, this is 40 Newton, this is 20 Newton. So can we say the acceleration will always be in the greater force direction. So acceleration is in the 40 Newton direction and this acceleration will be the upward direction. So acceleration A is equal to we can write the greater force that is 40 minus the smaller force that is 20 divided by the total mass in the system. So we have 2 plus 2 plus 2 that is 6. So you will get this as 20 divided by 6 and that is equal to 10 divided by 3 meter per second squared. So 10 divided by 3 meter per second squared is the acceleration. Now I hope all of you understood why I took 40, why I took 20. See, why I took 40 because this is 2 kg, this is 2 kg, 2 plus 2, 4, 4 uh, into 10 is 40. Why? Because mass into acceleration due to gravity, right? And this is 20. Okay. So acceleration, once we got the acceleration, draw the FBD of C block. It is 40 Newton, which is acting, sorry, it is the 20 Newton, act, which is acting on the C block, isn't it? Why? Because block of mass 2 kg given, right? And the tension T that is in between B and C, that is what we need. And the acceleration we have in the downward direction and that is 10 divided by 3 meter per second squared. Now see over here the point which is really very important and that is the acceleration is always in the direction of greater force. So which one is greater force? Is it a T or 20? It's a 20 Newton, right? So over here I can write the greater force 20 minus the smaller force T is equal to mass is 2 into 10 divided by 3. So tension will get 20 minus 20 divided by 3 and that is 40 divided by 3 Newton. Now as you can see over here, we will get this is 13.33 Newton. So we can approximate this as 13 Newton. So answer for this question we have is 13 Newton. Right, so this trick is really very important. So this is the master trick we can say. Acceleration is greater force minus the smaller force divided by total mass in the system. And we can solve any type of problems, be it as a pulley problem, be it as a blocks problem or any type of problem by using this trick. Okay, so I'll solve this uh, the other problem by using the same trick. Okay, so this is the problem given second number. Two balls A and B of same size are dropped from same point under gravity. Mass of A is greater than the mass of B. If air resistance acting on each ball is same, then both the balls reach the ground simultaneously. The ball A reaches early, ball B reaches early, nothing can be said. So this is given mass A, this is given mass B air resistance on it is F and air resistance on it is F because air resistance acting on each ball is same given. Over here it is M A into G. Over here it is given M B into G. So acceleration for it is 
a a and acceleration for it is a b so can we write can we write acceleration for the first one is m a g minus f divided by m a and acceleration for b we have is m b g minus f divided by m b so acceleration a is equal to g minus f divided by m a and acceleration b we have is g minus f divided by m b now here is the catch that you need to understand mass of a is given greater right it is given the mass of a is greater yes mass of a is greater than mass of b now tell me if mass of a is greater that means you can consider this as 10 and this as 5 let us consider that right mass a is greater than mass b now tell me this is 0.1 we have and this is 0. Point, 0. Point we have 2 isn't it okay so we have this is 0 0.1 and this is 0 0.2 0 0.2 now g is 10 minus 0 0.1 we have and f we will consider 1 here 10 minus 0 0.2 we have now which one which one is greater over here see this is 10 minus 0 0.1 indicates 9.9 .9 and this is 10 minus 0 0.2 indicates 9.8 so can we say acceleration of a acceleration of a is greater than acceleration of b listen see mass of a is greater over here that means this quantity is lesser right this quantity is lesser mass of b is lesser over here indicate this quantity is greater so constant minus greater quantity will give you less no right so that indicates a is greater than a b okay now what is time what is time required for this wall to come down it is it is we have h is equal to 1 by 2 a a h a is equal to 1 by 2 a into t a squared and h b is equal to 1 by 2 a b into t b squared but h is same so we have we have t a is equal to root of 2 h divided by a a and t b is equal to root of 2 h divided by a b as now see as a a is greater than a b that is acceleration of a is greater than acceleration of b can we say t a is less than t b so time required for a is lesser than the time required for b now why because a is greater a b is lesser so time required for this is lesser and this is greater so i hope this is clear so T A is lesser than T B means time required for A is lesser. That means ball A reaches earlier. Ball A reaches earlier. So I hope this is clear. So this is the analysis which we have. Now the next question. A block of mass M is placed at rest on an inclined plane of inclination theta. So one block is there which is placed at rest. So tell me this is the mg force which is acting on it right and we want total force of uh, force the inclined plane exerts on the block is okay so as this block is uh, at rest can we say the total force total force the block has to exert on on plane or plane on block will be mg only so there is no other force so only mg force will act on this uh, what is called as the 
blank isn't it so the uh, if you want you can have the components also this is theta so the frictional force will act in this direction then we have this is the normal force mg's two components are there this is mg sin theta and this is mg cos theta so net force we have is f net is equal to root of n squared plus f squared what is n over here mg cos theta because it is at rest now and f is mg sin theta whole square now if you just calculate this you will get mg na? so i hope this is clear it's very simple if you go with the basics right so the next question in the figure a block of mass 10 kg is in equilibrium identify the string in which the tension is zero okay now see we have this is 100 newton right 100 newton so this is the tension tb we have this is the tension tc we have and this is the tension t a we have okay now now over here over here this is 90 degree given this is 120 degree given so this must be 150 degree yeah. so 150 120 and this is 90 degree so can we write t a divided by sin 120 degree t a divided by sin 120 degree must be equal to t b divided by sin 90 degree by lamy's theorem which is equal to t c divided by sin 150 degree and as you can see over here tension will never be zero in this right tension will never be zero in this why because this t a is 100 no so over here this is 100 divided by sin 120 we have is a root 3 by 2 root 3 by 2 which is equal to t b divided by sin 90 we have is 1 which is equal to t c divided by sin uh, 150 we have is 1 by 2 so as you can see over here we have t b is equal to 200 by root 3 and t c is equal to 100 divided by root 3 so tension tension in in b is 200 by root 3 and c 100 by root 3 so b not possible c not possible a not possible none of the above is the correct answer now the next question in this question it is given at what minimum acceleration should a monkey slide a rope whose breaking strength is two third of its weight okay now this is the rope given and this is the monkey right now with what acceleration this monkey monkey has to slide down so that so that the maximum the maximum this uh, rope can bear the tension of two third its own weight okay so i hope this is clear right with what acceleration this monkey has to go down so that the maximum tension in the string is two third of its own weight that is of its uh, monkey's weight okay so acceleration we know that acceleration will always be in the direction of greater force so mg is greater as you can see over here mg minus two third of mg must be equal to mass into acceleration so if you just calculate this you will get this is mg divided by 3 is equal to ma so mm get cancelled what is the acceleration it is z divided by 3 it is z divided by so i hope this is clear with what acceleration minimum acceleration this monkey should slide a rope whose breaking strength is given and that is two-third its own weight so i hope this is clear Chalo, next question for the arrangement shown in the figure the reading of the spring balance is okay so what is the reading of the spring balance so this is given 10 kg this is given 5 kg that means we have to just find what is the tension okay how to find tension now see Firstly, I told, firstly see what are the forces acting. 
one is 100 newton which is acting in the downward direction other is 50 newton which is acting in the downward direction which one is greater 100 newton is greater so mark acceleration in the 100 newton direction this is also acceleration now this 100 newton is greater than 50 newton indicates acceleration we have is the greater force that is 100 minus the smaller force that is 50 divided by the total mass in the system that is 15 so which is equal to 50 divided by 15 and that is 10 divided by 3 meter per second squared once we got the acceleration now you can find the tension just draw what the bd so this is the 10 kg block we have we have 100 newton in the downward direction tension upward direction acceleration downward direction so we have 100 minus t that is the greater force minus the smaller force c in each and every problem, I am using the same thing again and again, right? Greater force 100 minus smaller force T is equal to 10 into A. So now, now 100 minus what is uh, T? That is what we need to find. It is 100 divided by 3. So T we have is 100 minus 100 by 3, which is 200 divided by 3. So which is 66.66 Newton. 66.66 newton and that is not given that means uh, check it one more time we have 100 minus 50 is there any weight for the spring no so we have 100 minus 50 it is 100 by 3 100 minus 100 by 3 it is 200 by 3 it is 66.66 newton and yes, that must be then none of the above. So I hope this is clear. Now, seventh one, two blocks of masses 2 kg and 1 kg are in contact given. Okay. So two blocks are in contact, 2 kg and 1 kg. So this is 2 kg, this is 1 kg. And uh, on a frictionless table, when the horizontal force, horizontal force of 3 Newton is applied on 2 kg, the value of force of contact between this two, okay. What is the contact force between 2 kg and 1 kg? For that, we need acceleration. Acceleration will always be in the greater force direction. Force over here is only 3 Newton. So, it is the force 3 minus small force 0 divided by total mass 3, which is 1 meter per second squared. Now, once we got this acceleration, find a free body diagram in the horizontal direction. It is only the contact force which is acting on this 1 kg block. And acceleration is 1 meter per second squared. Now, contact force is very simple to find. It is contact force is equal to mass into acceleration 1 into 1, which is equal to 1 meter per second squared. 1 meter, sorry, 1 newton it is, right? Kg meter per second squared. So, it is newton. It is the force, no? So, that is the, that is the reason over here we have force as 1 newton. Now, some of you will say, why you used only the 1 kg block? Why not 2 kg the block? Uh, 2 kg block. See, you can use 2 kg block and you will get the same answer. I'll prove that. And we have this is the 2 kg block. I'm considering now. And on this 2 kg block, one force is acting that is 3 Newton. One contact force is acting Fc. Every action has equal and opposite reaction. So, and the uh, acceleration is 1 meter per second squared. Now, greater force is 3 minus smaller force is Fc is equal to 2 into 1 and as you can see Fc we are getting and that is 1 Newton. So, you can you can go by this way or that way you will get the same answer. Right. So, answer for this is 1 Newton. So, it is the option D. Chal, next question. Now, in this it is given a jet of liquid of cross sectional area A strikes a wall making angle theta. So, cross sectional area is given A, making angle theta given with the wall. Wa the water strikes with the wall with velocity V and rebounds elastically, means velocity is same. If density of liquid is rho, the normal force on the wall is okay. <coughs> so, this is the wall which we have. This is the jet of cross sectional area A given. And it rebounds with the same angle. 
it has to rebound with the same angle then. So what is the normal force that is what we want. So over here firstly we have to calculate the momentum right change in momentum will give you what is called as the force right now normal force okay so over here mass times the velocity is called as the momentum and the change in momentum we have so this is the rebound velocity we can say v this is the incident velocity we can say v so over here the change in velocity will calculate now what is the change in velocity so firstly velocities two components are there so i'll, I'll just uh, extend this over here this is the velocity v we have so it has two components one is in this direction other one is in this direction this angle is theta indicate this angle is theta so it is v cos theta and this is v sin theta we have and likewise if i extend this and if i draw the components of velocity so this is the velocity which we have and uh, there are two components as you can see over here this is theta so this must be theta so it is v cos theta and v sin theta <coughs> v cos theta and v sin theta we have okay so over here what is the change in momentum change in momentum we have is mass times final velocity minus the initial velocity so which is equal to mass m times what is the final velocity we have it is only the v sin theta minus v sin theta minus initial velocity is v sin theta so in total we have minus 2 m v sin theta so this is the change in momentum we have right change in momentum now mass what is mass over here mass is nothing but density into volume into what is called as velocity sin theta so that is equal to minus 2 rho into volume is area of cross section into the length l into v sin theta we have now force we know that it is the change in momentum by the time so which is equal to change in momentum we have is minus 2 rho area of cross section a l v sin theta divided by what is uh, time we have t so over here l by t is nothing but the velocity so force f is equal to minus 2 rho a v squared sin theta we have so this is the answer for the force and this force is nothing but what the normal force this force is nothing but what the normal force so i hope this is clear i'll explain it one more time so see here we have a jet which uh, spill out the water with velocity v supposed to be it rebounds elastically that means this velocity and this velocity must be same elastically indicates elastically indicates velocity before the collision magnitude of the velocity magnitude of the velocity before the collision and after the collision must be same must be same right uh, magnitude of the velocity before and after it must be same over here as you can see so we can take the component of this v perpendicular to this wall and parallel to this wall likewise uh, velocity this v its component perpendicular to the wall and the parallel to the wall and as you can see this v cos theta and this v cos theta are in the same direction so change in momentum for this will be this zero momentum along the y axis will be zero no why because v cos theta v cos theta it will be v cos theta minus v cos theta zero only the momentum along the perpendicular direction perpendicular to wall direction it will be same uh, it will be 
it will contribute we can say right v sin theta i consider this direction as negative and this direction as positive so minus v sin theta minus v sin theta minus 2 mv sin theta that is the change in momentum and force we know change in momentum by time and mass we have density into volume and accordingly i changed everything so i hope this is clear so this is the ninth question consider the shown arrangement where the blocks a and b connected by means of uniform string is being moved vertically up by force f each block weighs 2 kg while the mass of the string is 500 g the tension at midpoint of a string equals okay so midpoint of a string equals so over here this is a block of mass 2 kg given this is a string of mass 0.5 kg given and this is a block of mass 2 kg given and it is being accelerated uh, upward by a force of 54 newton so if you consider that this as a total system that is the total mass on the in the system is 4.5 so if you just take the force in the downward direction it will be like 45 newton we have isn't it 45 newton we have uh, this is 2 this is 2 4 this is 0.5 45 newton so what is the acceleration we have then acceleration is equal to the greater force 54 minus the smaller force 50 45 divided by total mass in the system is 4.5 we have so as you can see over here what is the 54 minus 45 if you take 54 minus 45 you will get 9 right now 9 divided by 4.5 and if you just solve this you will get 2 meter per second squared right this is the acceleration now once we got the acceleration you can take the free body diagram from this point so from that point if you take the free body diagram it is like this we have this is 2 kg and mass of this part we have is if total l length we have 0.5 kg l by 2 length we have 0.25 kg and this is the tension t we have in the upward direction so what is the total mass in the downward direction it is 22.5 newton total uh, weight and tension t upward and acceleration we have is 2 meter per second square now as you can see tension t is greater than 22.5 so t minus 22.5 must be equal to 2.25 that is the total mass into the acceleration is 2 so if you just take tension 22.5 plus it is 4.5 so you will get this is equal to this is 27 newton 27 newton so i hope this is clear so answer for this is 27 newton that is option a now the last question we have two mass m and m dash are tied with a thread passing over a pulley m dash is on the frictionless horizontal surface okay so we have horizontal surface m dash is on it and one pulley is there and to it one mass m is connected we want if acceleration due to gravity is z the acceleration of m dash in this arrangement is what is the acceleration of m dash it is same as that of the m same it will not change so mg will act in this direction in the horizontal direction there is no force force is equal to zero so acceleration is very simple it is a greater force mg minus smaller force zero divided by total mass in the system m plus m dash so what is acceleration then m divided by m plus m dash in 2g that is it it is that simple see here now some of you will say why didn't you consider m dash g in this are uh, this block will move in which direction is is this block move in the downward direction in the rightward direction or the leftward direction it will move in the rightward direction so we have to consider the horizontal forces for m dash m will move in the downward direction that's why we have to consider the vertical or the downward forces for m so i hope this all points are clear to you all now whatever doubts you have in this uh, laws of motion you can always comment in the comment box i'll try to reply to your comment as soon as possible thank you so much